until you brush your teeth without me having to get after them. Yep. Well, you might still need to remind me. I don't mind reminding you. It's the reminding you ten times okay. that I argue about it. You see this idea works for me? I certainly would be happy about your teeth getting brushed more often. I don't know how I'm going to be about the no toothpaste part. But then the dentist did say that uh, brushing is more important than, than using toothpaste so much. Um, so yeah, maybe that would, maybe that would work. Uh, should we give this a try? I guess so. And if it doesn't work, we'll talk again and we'll see if it does work. Okay. But, but you get the idea, right? Yeah, you know. Not wanting to use two, three. And you can have the end of the brush. Yeah, his goal, his goal was, was to get it. Yeah, I think yeah. the thing is, is that we often think that. To help yes. a child who's inflexible, you have to be flexible. And what often happens is we get inflexible. So the only way to combat inflexibility is to actually be flexible. And so I think he actually, he made significant progress. Maybe, 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 maybe not. I mean, there was a little bit of a compromise, but I think he got clear on what was most important and <laughs> drop the rest. And that's kind of what this is all about. It's being clear about the goal, not the solution. So he dropped the one solution, which was the toothpaste, but his goal was very clear, I want my child to brush. And Green talks about how when you're in a power struggle, you're usually in a dueling, you're usually dueling solutions, and you're not, you're not opening up and stepping back and clarifying what you, what, what is your goal. Maybe the child doesn't I think he did. He told him. He said. He got it. But he didn't care. And that's the other thing. He didn't care. And he didn't have to care. But the dad did. So, because like kids don't, they don't, they don't see, they don't care, right? He didn't try and make him care, but he said that he, he held, he held to his caring, that he wasn't going to let go of his goal. So the dad had a goal. The kid didn't care. That's okay. But I'm not bending. Like he's gonna brush. Yeah. Maybe. So far, I don't know. I mean, I like this. Uh huh. So. Right. <laughs> 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 no, no. Maybe um, having the child go to a dentist and having the dentist explain and show them pictures of children's cavities and. Right. You know, that's an idea, and see, like, if you were brainstorming, you'd put that down. That would be one idea, and I think the purpose of this is seeing how there often are lots of ways, and the most important thing is that you're collaborating. That, in and of itself, as opposed to your goal being just do what I tell you, the just do what I tell you goal is not going to get you far in terms of helping kids be respectful and responsible and flexible and think outside of the box. I think that in the beginning, like what parents don't realize, is that the rapport that he just built with him gives him in maybe a couple days or a week yes. the ability to get his way later. You're because he felt hard. heard, he felt this You build the trust. But when you do that right away, your yes. child just wants to be defensive. See, and that's where your goal is clear. Because if your goal is the relationship and being open mm -hmm. and communicating, then this serves that purpose, and that will absolutely right. help you down the line when there are problems. Right, because you got it. Because he made him feel better. Eventually, that's the boy is going to want to make his dad happy by brushing with. Eventually, you just change the whole dynamic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's how you do it. Yeah, right? it's mm -hmm. in small okay. steps, in small <laughs> problems dealing with them like this. You'll take a kid who's naturally defiant and not open to any ideas, and that's how you chunk away at getting them to cooperate. Yeah. So, interestingly enough, that's exactly what happens in my house. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. our solution was that he brushed without um, Oh. Um, and we do go to the dentist. Uh -huh. so. yeah. But the piece that I fell down on uh -huh. in all of this is mm -hmm. the consistency at night. And um, if I don't yeah. go and see Benjamin, it's time to brush.
brush your teeth, and even if it's just with water, um, he's not he doesn't do it. Yeah. And so, and there's, yeah. So in the classroom too, it, it has to it, consistency you, it, has to be the key. Yeah, it's really hard, and that's part of like making yourself have routines. And that's where I fall yeah. down too, because I don't, I get a little bored with doing the same thing every day. So I'm like, yeah. ah, you know. And my kids fall down when I stop being consistent. My daughter gets home, when I have her in a routine, and I notice that I need the routine more than she does. Because if I don't, then I'll forget to monitor her, her steps. Like, she does it on her own, but that is where it falls. And owning that is actually really helpful, hand in hand, hand. Well, as far as classroom routine, mm -hmm. can you do the same thing but not do the same thing? Like. Have the same, the same activity but different versions of that activity. Sure. Yeah. You know, you're still doing a routine, mm -hmm. but you're, oh. yeah, you're mixing it up. A oh, bit. yeah. Yeah, there's a structure, but you're swapping it out so that you, know. so you don't get bored of the kids. Right, 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 right. Yes. My, my brother, he used to babysit for me. Uh huh. And he used to babysit me, and he used to do reverse psychology. And making it fun. And they can get bubble gum. to remember, you know, the five minute warning for that one kid or to help others too. Like it's it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's also important to think about this in terms of parents because I think, you know, sometimes like you don't agree with a parent's decision making. Yeah. But you're if you don't have that bond with them and just say, okay, you know, and let that slide or let things happen, then you don't get to the place you want to get to later. Just like so, you were saying yeah. about the, you know, like you have to be flexible. Yeah, really flexible because and you're not going to always agree and you're going to have to sort of let that go so that you can build that bond with yes. them later. It's more important. And the trust. Mm -hmm. the truth. It, it is. And, yeah, I mean, make it a positive. If, if yeah. you're dealing with an, an inflexible other adult. Yeah. I, don't, I like how you said you deal with inflex, flex, inflexibility with flexibility. Yes. And that's how you'll bring you it don't down. teach a child to be flexible by being equally as inflexible. You actually start bending, and what it feels like to some parents, if you grew up in a in a home or with a value system that you valued obedience over other things, you're going to get yourself in a jam because that's the inflexibility that usually leads to inflexibility. What we want are behaviors that are responsible and caring, and that think about other people and 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 those, and that that they do listen, but not blindly. Like, and I like the way when you use about it's about the goal and not the solution because yeah. there are a lot of solutions. There really are a oh. lot of solutions out there. We all use them in our classroom all the time. Yeah. But if you can get parents on your side about the goal, the goal. Or, not on it's your side, but if you can come to an agreement as to what the goal is, yes. then I think the solutions are going to follow. Yes. It's just like so academics. True. It's the same with yeah. academics yeah. because like sometimes so they don't want to write their name at that time. They don't want to practice writing. Yeah. And it's like, well, they have to practice. Well, they have to write. They have to write. Well, they don't have to write right there. It's, you know, yeah. they can do it in 50 other ways. Right. So yeah. it's the same thing yeah. on more physical. Yeah. I have another video along those lines that really brings that point home. Where when you originally when I bring up this particular problem between a parent and a child, most people are like, "Yeah, of course you're not going to bend on that." I don't want to tell you what it is yet. 
because I think I might show it if I don't remind me. It's a, it's a great example of the focus on the solutions versus the goals. And, and when you first hear the thing presented, it's one of those things where you think, well, of course the adult's choice is going to be the one. I, of course I'm not going to give her a choice. And, and usually there's an option that is, is flexible. So I'm going to give you a personal example, one that you can all probably relate to or that you know parents in your school can relate to. And we'll, we'll try and pull out some of the steps ourselves. So, so this was example that I had for, for so long with my daughter it didn't matter you know if you give so many people give you advice like I could not get her to school on time she couldn't couldn't get her out the door I could wake up earlier I could lay out all her stuff I mean you name it fancy breakfast all these great things but really what I, I needed to do was involve her in the process and that sometimes is half the battle so mornings are stressful and unpleasant in your house you've tried everything from getting yourself up early to packing the car the night before in spite of these attempts, your child has been late to school almost every day this week. So that my Sophie is 13 now, so but she was, I don't know, maybe 7, 8, I can't remember. Okay, so let's look at the steps. And this is really her complaint. So you want to, before you even engage it, go down this process, you want to describe the problem in neutral terms, just like we've been practicing. So that's where you begin. We've been late for school three times this week. So I did. I said, we've been late to school three times. She said, I hate it when you rush me and you yell. It makes me go even slower. <laughs> right? And so, okay. Step one describe everyone's concerns. So, start by using empathy to describe her concerns. So, what would you say back at this stage? We're going down this process. What would your, what would your, we're at step one. What's her concern? What's her concern? She doesn't like it. Yes. 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 That that sounded. I felt that you really don't like it when I yell, and and I did. But meanwhile, what's going on in my head is like seriously. I asked you ten times. Of course, I mean it, but I didn't. I said you really don't like it when I yell, and it, and you definitely don't like to. She doesn't. She does not like to be rushed. Who <laughs> does? And you hate it when I rush you. Yeah. Okay, what's your concern? Step into my shoes. What was I concerned about? Being late for school. Being late for school. Why? Sometimes the why is really powerful. Why would, Why might a mom be concerned about her being late? Too many. She just wants to know how to miss them. I don't, I, I, I realize she gets, she does better when she's there earlier and she gets to get set up. <laughs> And I was forgetting things. So what I would do, it didn't matter how prepared I was, the last minute I was like, yeah! And then I'd forget something because I was so angry and I'd leave my projector at home and I would even matter. Mm -hmm. So what would a personal message be that I might say? What would my personal message be? Just starting with... I'm, 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 I'm upset because I have things to do today and you're, making, you're also making... Okay, take the you're making the you're making me late is a little accusatory. But rephrase it. The first part was great. I get upset. I'm upset. I have a lot of things to do today. And describe. And when we're late, it makes me. Yeah. It makes me press. I feel pressed. Yes, that's right. Please. Great. Excellent. That's just and that's not. I'm not getting defensive. Like oh, I didn't even think about you. What would another personal message be? Maybe about, yeah. I'm concerned about you being late for school because you do better when you have time. And when we are late, it makes me feel stressed. Great. That's, that's a personal message. All those, uh -huh. I totally live that life. Yes. And I, um, <laughs> get, I get scared at the report card time every yeah. year because of the number that I see. Oh, I know. Uh, I know. It freaks me right out. Um, but I, I, I feel worried that I'm not teaching them responsibility. There. And that that's always, that, that's going to be a lifelong issue. You know, usually when you go deeper, that's really what's underlying that too. And especially if you're someone who's usually late as well, that I'm not teaching you these skills. See, that, then that's, that is like, pulls it right out. Yeah. Well, the other piece of it for me was I also didn't like yelling. I'd do it and then I'd feel badly. Like, and I was like, oh, I really don't even like yelling either. 
So you do all those, and you, and you stick to them, because I might say something and she might say something like, yeah, but, and you just keep, keep going through them, you're still at step one. Composite goal, what would empathy be? What might she want? Great. How would you say it in an empathic statement? You're there. There. That's her goal. She wants to take her time. She doesn't want to feel rushed. She might have other goals. That's it, right? So you don't want to be rushed. And what else does she not like? She doesn't want to, and you don't want to be yelled at. Okay, how about my personal message? What do I want? I want to get out of the house on time. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to yell either. either. <laughs> that's the, so that's the identify the composite goals, and I, you look for agreement. So do you think there's a way that maybe we can get to look time, you can help me think of some ways that I don't have to yell at it. And I opened it up, right, to brainstorm ideas. You restate both the goals to make our morning more enjoyable and less for us and also be on time. Well, I couldn't believe it. I mean, just involving her in that process they come up with crazy things, but the most important thing at this step, which is step three, is that you write your ideas on a piece of paper. I don't know what it is, but it is something about that piece of paper. And they will say, can you get out that paper, write that down. It's something that makes it concrete. Write it down. Don't evaluate the ideas at each step. You will, and you'll be tempted to, and we all do. Because they'll come up with something you know won't work, and your tendency will be like, that is not going to work. Just write it down. And then get at least one or two from the child. So... I couldn't believe it. Some of our ideas, and they've worked since. And, and, and in the ideas, I gained insight as to what was part of the problem in the first place. So she said, I, she said, I get to watch a show if I get downstairs early. <laughs> okay, write it down. And I was thinking, yeah, that's going to be another problem. I didn't say anything. Write that down. Uh, the other idea was, uh, she said, I hate it when, so what I would do, because I was just avoiding her in the morning, was I'd get her brother to wake her up, because I'd be downstairs and I'd be like, Skylar, can you get Sophia? Well, he walks in, flips on the lights, make her all mad. <laughs> and so the, she said, how about if you get me an alarm clock or 